is Jared Verge, and welcome to my Electroscope Inquiry Project. So here we have our Electroscope. I built this one out of household items. So it's got our copper wire here, our insulation, or our wire, or our tubing, and it's got a metal lid with a glass jar, which is also an insulator, and it has aluminum foil shaped leaves. This electroscope is a good measure that there is a presence of voltage, however it is not the best at um, coming up with a quantitative value for this voltage. Now we will run some basic conduction and induction tests to see if this electroscope is working properly. For our net negative charge, I will take this balloon. Now, I will charge it by friction by rubbing it on my shirt. The balloon will end up with a net negative charge. This is because on the electrostatic series, cotton is lower than rubber on the electrostatic series, which means that this balloon will hold more electrons. It'll hold the electrons more tightly than this cotton shirt. So when I rub this balloon on my shirt, the electrons from my shirt will transfer onto the balloon, creating a net negative charge. For these two objects, this is what I'm going to use to create this po the positive charge. I have the glass bottle here and silk here. Now, I will also charge these by friction, and according to the electrostatic series, Glass is very low on the electrostatic series, which means that it will lose electrons very easily. It does not, it doesn't hold onto them tightly. That is in contrast with this silk that will hold onto electrons more, more than this glass will. So, when I rub the glass and the silk together, the glass is going to be giving the electrons to this silk, creating a net positive charge. So this is our positive charge, and this is our negative charge. Now, for the tests. The first test I will be running is by conduction. So I'll take our balloon here, and I'll rub it with my shirt. I apologize for the noise. We will touch to the top, and now it's conducted. The leaves spread apart because opposites attract, and when we touch it to the top, it creates one system where the electrons transfer, because it's a net negative charge, the electrons transfer from this balloon to the copper wire, and then into these aluminum foil things to equal out because electrons go from high concentration to low concentration. So the electrons flow from this balloon that is charged into this electroscope and give it a net negative charge in the electroscope. It's very similar what happens with the positive charge that we will create here. The positive charge will be conducted to the top or um, touched to the top of the copper wire and it will equal out the charge. Now, I will ground the electroscope before just to make sure that the uh, charge in the electroscope is uh, zero or the net is the electron charge is equal to the proton charge in this electroscope. So I think it's charged, I'll ground it, and then I'll touch the top. And as you can see there, they're moving pretty crazily.
and that is charging by conduction. Charging by induction is a little bit different. Induction uses the charges as well, but you would put the charges in close proximity to the top of this copper wire to um, create charge migration. And what charge migration is, is when you have, say, a negative charge at the top here, the electrons and the protons will move in different directions depending on this charge here. So this is, if this is a net negative charge, then the balloon will repel all the electrons down into the base of this electroscope. And all the positive charge will be attracted to this electroscope, making this system polarized. There is no transfer of electrons though, as there's no contact. That's what is in contrast with conduction where there actually is electron transfer because there is contact with the charge and the copper wire. So let's charge up this balloon. Again, sorry for the noise. Um, and we just put it in close proximity to the top and they spread apart right away. They so what's basically happening here is you have a net negative charge which sends the negative electrons in this electroscope down. They will, the aluminum foil things still repel because they're both negatively charged and opposites, um, sorry, likes repel. So we just put it to the top there and this is, it, this is what we call polarization of the electroscope where charges migrate um, in relation to this um, charge source here. Again, same applies basically for the positive, the glass rod and so the positive charge. It basically does the same thing except it's flipped. The positive will be in close proximity to the top of the electroscope, which will in turn send the electrons up into the, up close to the positive charge, this glass here, and then the positive charge, the positive charge in the electroscope will be repelled by the positive charge here, and in turn it will move down. So this one's, this one's quite effective as well. Just move this moves right apart. So I take it off and it goes back to normal. It equalizes out again. But when I bring the charge close again, well maybe we need more we need more charging by friction. So when I remove this positive charge or when I take it away the leaves go back to normal, um, they go back to the way they were before this charge was in close proximity. Okay, so we got, so they are spreading apart, which means therefore that they are being polarized and charge migration is occurring, which is uh, the result of this positive charge here moving the charges around. Here we go. Now we will ground the electroscope. Now, in order to make the electroscope either positively charged or negatively charged, there needs to be uh, induction present not convection, induction, and it has to have a ground. So, we take our negative charge here, we induct this charge up to the top, and then we touch this, I mean, ground, 
we're just basically grounding all of the all of the um, so the negative electrons are being attracted the positive electrons are being attracted to the top here and we're just grounding all the negative electrons that means that this electroscope is negatively charged because we took the this negative charge here and we brought the electrons up sorry we brought the positive charge up and we repelled the negative charge which means that this is positively charged it has a net positive charge in this in this electroscope now it's a net positive charge same happens with the positive charge here in order for there to be a net charge in the electroscope a, ground, a grounding device has to be present there has to be a grounding of the electroscope in order for this to occur put a grounding device We're basically grounding all of the, uh, with this positive charge here, we're bringing the negative electrons up and we're grounding the positive char charge. So the negative is being attracted to this positive bottle. Now in order to take this off, we will need to take off the ground first, like so, and then take away this charge. If we did it the other way, if we had this charge here and we took off the charge, the remaining charge that was in there would be grounded and it would be it would go back to uh, normal. It would go back to its neutral state. This concludes my electroscope tutorial on how to test your electroscope. Until next time, have a good day. So here we have our insulators. Here we have our insulators. I hope you enjoyed this electroscope tutorial.